If we keep our prices low and raise our average wage substantially, we would, in fact, decrease our profitability disproportionately, and we would sacrifice a healthy chunk of what it is that our shareholders expect from us. It is written in the New Testament, the love of money is the root of all evil. This does not say that money itself is evil. The fact that I shared a room last night with Tom Shoei, our CFO, while we were in New York, saved $200. The fact that my dinner was $10 last night, saved money. You shall not steal. Doesn't this teach us that keeping everything for ourselves is a form of stealing? Or are we commanded to help those less fortunate to find enough to eat? Today I want you to know, however, that five members of that family uh, uh, together are worth $102 billion. The widow and four children have in the last 20 years emerged on the list of the top 10 wealthiest people in the United States. They could easily take 10 billion of that and see to it that every employee of Walmart in the United States has health care, an adequate pension, and adequate wages. Well, Walmart, after the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center and Pentagon, they, they uh, apparently decided that they needed to have a, a bunker. There's a facility for the Walton family uh, in case of an apocalyptic attack, uh, a residence that they can live in and reside in in case uh, they had to do that. There's a helipad behind the facility back there where they can come in by helicopter, and there's satellite uplink uh, dishes back behind the facility. And most of it is underground, as you can see. You can't really see much from the gate, which is all fortified. Faith means nothing at all if it does not involve us in loving one another as neighbors, in compassion for the poor. When you hear these bells at Walmart, do you remember the people they're ringing for? They remind us of our friends and neighbors who could use a little help. That's why at Walmart, we give back. throughout the holidays and all year long. Of course, the most important beneficiary of this store is our customer. It's the customer who lives in that neighborhood. I was actually selling cars for about six months, but, but prior to that, I actually had my own business. I was doing a uh, wood refinishing on boats, and I actually did quite well at that. So, that getting a little too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I was going to go through all that I went through, I wanted something to come out of it, you know, something good. There was a truck to one side that had a camp shell, and there was a van to one side. I thought, you know, I've always said, you know, you don't want to be in a spot where nobody can see you. But I thought, four car spaces from the front door, and I thought they had security outside. Okay, well, I should be fine. And uh, when I got out, two, there was two of them. Uh, unfortunately, he caught me. I got outside, but he caught me, and that's when I realized he had a gun, because he had a gun in the arm that was holding me. And that's when they told me, get back in the car, I'm going to blow your head off. The year before, when I worked at the phone company, we had a safety meeting, and it was around Christmas time. And it was, they had the sheriff's department out there, and they were talking about if you're ever in a parking lot, 
and this happens, what to do, don't go with them. If you go with them, you're likely not going to live because I guess it's statistically that's what happens. They'll kill you. That's what first went through my mind is that I'm, yeah, I'm not going to survive this. Um, sorry. Um, so that's why, you know, the decision to jump out because I thought, you know, I want to either chance or I want to choose, you know. And I didn't, because I thought they were going to rape me too. When he said he didn't want the car, I thought they were going to rape me. Um, So when they fought, they got me back in the car after looking at the gun, I just kind of resigned to, the, you know, it, like I couldn't, there was nothing I could do. And I just kind of went, you go kind of cold inside. This is the parking lot where Laura Tanaka faced her attackers. Inside the store, Walmart had more than 200 security cameras and four security guards on patrol. Outside, there was nothing. The police did recommend on-site security and that there was none. That he, they had assured the people of the neighborhood that they would provide on um, security and make sure it was safe for the neighborhood and that wasn't done. It was evident that Walmart knew they had substantial problems in their parking lots. Walmart was aware that the majority of the crime throughout the states occurred in their parking lots despite the fact that 80 percent of the crime occurred in their parking lots they had done almost nothing to protect the customers in the lots. Rape, murder, kidnapping, all of these shocking allegations, and they come from Walmart shoppers. Report of a Walmart parking lot attack. Tonight, North Texas police are on the hunt for a would-be kidnapper. A violent attack in the parking lot of an Orange County Walmart. At least one man tried to carjack, rob, and shoot a woman. Who shot and killed 33-year-old Mark Karenik in the store's parking lot. A bold and deadly shooting. It happened this morning at the Walmart. Taylor's woman is recovering tonight after fighting a thief in a Walmart parking lot. A man is arrested after a tire iron attack. It happened in a parking lot of this Walmart. The two teenage workers shot while gathering carts in the parking lot yesterday at this Glendale Walmart. It happened at 1.48 this morning in the Walmart parking lot in Riverdale. She turned to run from the subject and was shot in the back. Walmart has conducted research on crime in its parking lots, and critics accuse the company of a nationwide pattern of covering up that research of failing to turn it over in lawsuits. Here's what Walmart did not want to show. As early as 1994, as you can see in this internal document, a Walmart study showed that 80% of crime at Walmart locations occurred in the parking lot. And when the company added roving patrols at several sites, the crime rate dropped to as low as zero. A district judge in Beaumont tonight is fining Walmart stores $18 million. Judge James Mahaffey is sanctioning Walmart for what the court believes was a pattern of deception. It involves the case of a southeast Texas woman who was sexually assaulted and raped in the parking lot of Walmart. The court found that Walmart did not disclose that it had conducted a safety study. A study that found if Walmart would put employees in golf carts patrolling its parking lots, crime there would drop to zero. Judge Sherilyn Wood heard a case against Walmart in Houston, Texas in 1999 involving an assault in a Walmart parking lot. She says that in 17 years on the bench and over 25,000 cases, she's rarely seen such flagrant abuse of the system. It was very disturbing to see such uh, an, an intentional course of conduct. It was corrupt. She's charging Walmart with cheating in court, and she's not the only one. This is one judge. Is there something in the drinking water in Arkansas that says perjury is all right? Another judge. Rarely has this court seen such a pattern of deliberate obfuscation, delay, misrepresentation, and downright lying. True. Unfortunately for the customer, they really don't care what goes on after you spend your money in there and come out into the parking lot to go home. Police found Holden shot to death along the side of a road in Stanton, Texas, 400 miles from where she was abducted. Megan was uh, very special. We grew up together. We lived together. She's really, really going to be missed a whole lot because she has a lot of people that love her. She was just a very sweet person. And a whole lot out of life, but she just wanted to live and 
you know, be happy. That's all she wanted. Just recently, before she died, she, um, we were in her room l listening to a CD. And uh, we were singing together. And we could just be open with each other. We didn't care. Police say Megan Holden was chosen at random on the way to her pickup truck in the Walmart parking lot just before midnight. After that crime was caught on surveillance video, police say Williams, a Marine veteran with a history of drug offenses, sped off in Holden's truck heading west, where he apparently murdered the 19-year-old junior college student and dumped her body near some railroad tracks in the West Texas town of Stanton. I just think that there's a lot of things Walmart could have done. There should be somebody watching the cameras. Somebody should have been watching the cameras. Walmart has those cameras out there in their parking lot, and I thought that they were watching. A security camera without someone watching it is of no use at all. The abduction and murder that happened in Texas happened at a store where the loss prevention team was sent in to set up a security system outside that would track the union activity in that store. And the only reasons that they had the pictures that they did was because they had the union package on the outside of the store. Walmart focuses on protecting their property and not their patrons. When a multi-million dollar company, can you pay somebody $12 an hour to watch a camera? If people are putting profits before safety, they're putting profits before uh, human life, I don't think there's anything you can say to them. A man is suing the Walmart in Newcastle saying his mother died after a botched robbery attempt in a store's parking lot. The random Dale shooting Berkman happened here, that three people are dead and three others injured. The shooting happened right in the middle of a busy shopping day. At least one man tried to carjack, rob, and shoot a woman. In the Walmart Report of a Walmart, Walmart parking lot attack. Tonight, North Texas police are on the hunt for a would-be hey, kidnap. A bold and deadly shooting. Do you have a brand new Texas? Random Hanks. shooting. Kidnapping bold and deadly shooting. Shooting happened. North Texas police are on the hunt for a would-be kidnap. A bold and deadly shooting. Kidnapping 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 bold and deadly shooting.
and then little by little more people until they started feeling the pressure. They wanted to build the Walmart on this whole parcel. It was going to be 215,000 square feet, and there was going to be... Walmart was going to take this whole space. It's like 17 football field space. And they were going to build one big box that was Walmart, and then little stores in between, and then another big box that was Sam's Club. We volunteered to do the various chores that we had. And then we solicited what I call a court committee, and that was a group of people who would be responsible for the strategy, the press releases, everything that needed to be done to organize our campaign. So then the coalition started getting bigger and bigger, and before you knew it, everybody felt like if they were a part of a coalition for a better Inglewood, they weren't standing up to defend the community. And I think the other lesson learned in Inglewood is that there's no kind of magic potion to suddenly click this, you put this together, and suddenly you're going to win. It's a hard process. There are a lot of things that you have to put in place, um, but when you put those things in place, you can win. It includes the ability to organize regular people, small business owners, workers. We got our message focused. We hammered away on the phones, hammered away on doors. People saw us coming and going when they went to church. Every time they went to a store in Inglewood, there was a, a flyer about our, our effort. We held rallies. It's a legal strategy, enough resources to have the research, to be able to make your case, to be able to have the materials. It includes the ability to get at your message through the press, um, to do media events. It grew to 187 volunteers, and we had block captains, and we had area chairmen. We proceeded to gather signatures on our petitions. And we started out with 1,500 signatures, and by the time we got through, we had 4,000 signatures. And they were all from people within our, what I call our area code, our zip code. Zip code. Zip code. Inglewood is the first test for Walmart's ambitious plans in California, and activists say the stakes here are huge. This is like Godzilla eats Tokyo. This is much bigger than David and Goliath. All of the information that was coming from Walmart kept saying it's a done deal. There's nothing you can do about it. We have our zoning. Um, don't waste your time. But <laughs> we knew better. Then we had numerous public meetings to let the public know what was happening, what the status was. It is not like they came into the small towns in the south or towns that have no business and they brought in business. No, 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 this is something completely different. They represent from Bentonville, Arkansas, plantation capitalism. The future of this community depends on our ability to stop the monster in its tracks. Walmart sponsored the ballot initiative after Inglewood City Council opposed building a Walmart supercenter on the site. Today, Walmart opponents charge the initiative, Measure 4A, hijacks the city's planning process. It is 71 pages of legal fine print that seeks to cut the community out of its own development process. What they did was essentially tell the city of Inglewood, get out of here. We are the biggest corporation in the world. We can go in and essentially buy an election. We held public meetings. We did our letters. We held private meetings with city council members. We were out on the street and doing the work to ensure that people understood that to those who much has been given, much will be expected. I'm sure the Walton family believes that they're a good Christian family. Not if they're going to make billions at the expense of poor workers. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that think that they're good Christian companies. Not if they're going to make money off the backs of people who are suffering. A lot of people sacrificed an awful lot to have all the freedoms that we have. And that flag to me represents all of our freedoms. Our freedom to fight Walmart, our freedom to live where we want to, work where we want to, have a say in our government. They can say and believe whatever they want about, you know, trickle-down theories of capital and whatever else, whatever the nonsense they want to invent to hold on to their capital. But um, then as Christians, we don't have that option. But that's not our option, that we're not about capital. 
and we're about people. We came before the city council for the final vote, and the council voted 6 nothing to deny Walmart and Vestar, the developer, the right to build the store on that property. Residents of Inglewood, California, are voting today on whether to approve the construction of a new shopping development dominated by Walmart. That night, we gathered at a local restaurant, hoping for a miracle, but braced to go back to court if the measure passed. And now, the votes are coming in on a proposed Walmart superstore in Inglewood. This small group of people took on a giant and won. And it was really beautiful because nobody took them to win. It was really the place. Somewhere. City Council in Monroeville, Pennsylvania, handed Walmart their hat today. Walmart packed its bags in Cobb County, Georgia. Community resistance paid off in North Carolina. Walmart hit the road. Anti-Walmart candidates speak the Helotus, Texas election. Another trip down the long and dusty for Walmart in Biloxi, Mississippi. When you have a group of people, a small group of people, who don't want you in a community, does that mean you're not going to go there? Thornton, Colorado defeated Walmart. Walmart, beat Walmart loses Maine. to Plainfield, Illinois. Las Vegas, Nevada defeated Walmart. Walmart. When the Walmart defeated you have a group of people, Louisiana, small group, Walmart defeated who don't want, you, don't want you in a community. Walmart loses to Charlevoix, Michigan. Walmart beat Minnesota, Florida. Walmart loses to Chicago, Illinois. Walmart zoned out. Blackstaff, Arizona. Walmart rejects Walmart. Victory, Colchester, Connecticut. Success, Centerville, Utah. Victory, Harrison, New Jersey. An anti-Walmart slate was elected to city council in Deptford, New Jersey. Voters rejected Walmart in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. For Walmart man, defeated in Glendora, California. Walmart beaten in Medford, Oregon. One million people a year visit Washington's adult home at Mount Vernon. And on this President's Day, there was disbelief that anyone would dream of disturbing his boyhood farm. Because there's plenty of places for a shopping center, but there's only one Washington farm. Surveyors have already marked off the property line for the Walmart. Yeah, that's history. They shouldn't destroy a piece of history like that. The Hawaiian group sued, claiming Walmart and the state violated grave desecration laws and public trust. Where do you get off coming here, uh, you know, a foreign... What if it was their great-grandfather that was desecrated? For now, the remains are being stored in a trailer below a ramp leading to a parking garage at Walmart. We put a sign up in the uh, Worthington, Minnesota store that was, it was 10 feet over the uh, city code there and the building inspector red tagged it and the next thing I know that there's an overnight they, they call me and tell me there's an overnight package coming for me and I'm to take it to this person the envelope wasn't sealed and so I just opened it up and there's a ten thousand dollar check and I gave it to the individual and uh, the very next day the red tags off the sign people, small group of people, who don't want you in a community, does that mean you're not going to go there? Mm -hmm. 